Good evening, Good evening sir. 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 And tonight joining us um, from South Carolina, I believe, is Elizabeth Bethel. She's a golf caddy. And along with John Boyd, our regular panelist, he's a golf caddy here. Um, coming up, we'll preview the Women's British Open. And we'll talk about some of the issues about women in the world and how this week is promoting women in the world. Um, good Women's British Open is our first annual Women's British Open in 1976. Of golf, 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 and, golf, and the first time I played in Lincoln was six years later, I was in Burke. Enjoy the golden era sponsored by Weetabix in the late 80s and early 90s. And then in 2007, Nico assumes and brought a prominent player. Sherry Steinhauer and Carrie Webber were the three who were not and in 2002, the event was made to This week, if the heart comes to the home of the club, it comes to win an incredible achievement, very rarely been matched by the only Tiger Woods in 2001. So if you have a chance to plan plan next month, it's going to be a master. And this will be a great way to win the world if you want to achieve that feat. You finished just over 10, 10, 6 years ago. Years ago. Right. Without further ado, I'll just hand over to John for his opening comments about what should be an exciting week. Thank you, Jason. Um, Well, it seems, it seems like technology is pushing to this again. Um, unfortunately, John, John, clear as mud this week. It's better than the UK. <laughs> um, but the sound is terrible. It's actually just, just gone. So we're here back to you. Elizabeth, this is a huge week for the women's golf being played at the Hutton Golf. Um, what do you feel about it? Great this week. Great this week. Well, I think it's, you know, it's a fabulous week for women's golf. The fact that Indy Park is about to make a truly historic run is, is immensely exciting. I think not just for women golfers, but for all golfers. Nobody's done this. And the question now is can this golfer do it? Not necessarily can this woman golfer do it, but can this golfer do it? And Often I think we get all tangled up in men golfers and women golfers and so on and so forth. When in fact what we need to be looking at is what is it that makes it be such an extraordinary golfer? Not an extraordinary woman golfer, but an extraordinary golfer. And what is it that's brought her to this moment? That's the first thing I think. Now the second thing I think is that there are 140 odd other Superb golfers taking the field this week, and I don't want to lose sight of them. Even as I watch Indy, I don't want to lose sight of those other people. Yeah, I completely agree with your, your sentiment there. It is an incredible sporting achievement, an incredible golfing achievement, if she manages it this week. Um, and it would be great for golf in general, uh, not just female golf, but, but golf in general, if she could achieve it. It would bring a lot of attention to the game here at the home of golf. What about yourself, John? How do you feel this week? An exciting week for yourself, I think. <coughs> yes, um, we have got uh, the best lady golfers here. Um, in the park, obviously. Uh, but also, the uh, young time. Here, uh, 
Dan Peterson, Katrina Marcia. All big, big golfers, all big winners. I don't think it is a running competition for Indy. I think it's a bit wide more, a bit more wide open. And the, uh, the course is playing rather soft because of the rain we had in the last few days. And we will, we will yep. see. Some, we will see some quite. Uh, uh, I think some quite low scoring if the wind does not blow um, too hard. The, the greens are very very receptive. Yeah, I agree. From from obviously, I haven't been on the golf course, but I've seen it from my my perch in the new golf club. Um, it's got softer and softer, wetter and wetter in the last seven days. I went out yes. to take photos yes. on the golf course on Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, and came back looking like I'd just been for a swim in the North Sea. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was ridiculous. And yet, two weeks ago, the course looked like a, a runway. It was firm, it was fast, the rough was thick. Um, and it was going to play more like it should do here at St Andrews. Um, but it's so disappointing. I agree the course was looking like a proper length golf course. The first time it's looked like a length golf course since. Possibly 2008. Um, uh, we've, we've been playing park line golf on a Lynx golf course for four years here at St Andrews. Uh, divots have been the size of park line divots, uh, 12, 14 inches long, and it was back to that in my practice round on Monday of big divots. You're like, why am I picking big divots out of park line? Why are the Lynx watering and using sprinkler heads? It will, yeah, I, I just do not understand why they're doing it. There's, there was rain for, the, the rain is forecast. There's no need to go and put some sprinklers on. No. I saw a, a gentleman this afternoon playing in the Pro-Am. He was just short of Granite Clark's wine and he hit the shot and it looked oh, for all the world like it was fat actually. The divot was so big and it got onto the green and it actually it spun actually back. back. Um, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Oh, oh, I'm oh, and I do, and I, I agree with you, to protect the golf too much, the greenkeepers green here. here. Um, I think that I they, think should, that they just should just allow nature, nature to take it and, and see what happens. What happens. Because, because if you water it now, now, the rain we've had, the course is going to be a different part of some of these people. So, so, so um, it is. We can't get away from the issue. It's a huge issue for women's golf because of the profile of Andrew's Queen's home of golf. Um, the vast fields we have of international competitors from around the world. And and it brings an attention to the Women's British Open that perhaps other courses in the UK don't actually do. Um, so, so I think that you have to say that this week is a massive week for women's golf, for the LPGA Tour, for the Ladies European Tour, which have suffered over the last five years with the lack of sponsorship. Uh, Rico have been an excellent sponsor for the Women's British Open. And they've taken it from strength, from strength to strength. Um, the last four years have been played at Lynx courses. Um, last year, Royal Liverpool, slightly later because of the Olympic Games. Um, and, and the tournament has gone from strength to strength, really. Um, and I think it, it's when I look around here, and you can look around here, this is a big event. This is a big event, not just in women's golf, but a big event in all golf. Um, the Tentive Village is, is a decent size, as you can see behind me. Um, it, it's not obviously on the scale of the Open Championship, but nothing is apart from the Ryder Cup. Um, but this is a huge event in golf. Um, the infrastructure here is far bigger than it is at the Dunhill Lynx Championship in October. Um, and it, you can't get away from the fact that this is the showcase event in Europe and in fact outside of America for women's golf. It puts them on a level that they'll be seen on national television across the United States and in the UK, unlike any other annual tournament really. Um, and it really showcases the best talent that the world has to offer, and it does have a lot to offer, there's no question. It's a more global sport on the women's side than it is the men's side. Um, in American golf, it's been struggling women's golf in the last decade. Um, European golf, it's not as strong, 
but it's still holding its own remarkably, really, because of the, the lower per participation rates we have for women in Europe. Um, but Asian golf has really taken over. But then you have to take into account last week's winner, Carrie Webb from Australia, and it is a global sport at the very highest level. Um, and there's a lot of things that people, I think, can learn from women's golf as well. Um, and I think this week, from, for me, it's an exciting week. It's the first time I'm getting to go into the media centre. Um, it may be one day, it may be four days, that isn't confirmed yet. But it's going to be an exciting week to see uh, golf at the highest level and played in a, in a great, great environment, um, the home of golf. Um, and I think all the negative aspects of the issues that we had at Muirfield with the single sets clubs, um, I'm not saying it should be swept under the carpet because that isn't a good attitude to have. But you have to say that this this is an incredible uh, thing for, for women golf. It's only the second time ever at the home of golf. Um, and John, you obviously were here the last time it was here. Yes. Um, yeah. And what was the buzz? The buzz then was it? Was it, it was, a big event then? It was fantastic. The buzz was brilliant. All the girls were really excited. There was uh, the, uh, lady golfers were crying on the first tee. They were crying walking over the Falcon Bridge as they uh, played their round of golf. Uh, and then Joe Inks, there were tears running down her face. So it was incredible. Yeah, it's a big event for, for just historically, really. I mean, going back to um, the fact that it's taken so long for, for a women's major to come here really is. It's not too clever, really, is it? But it, well, it's, that's, 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 nothing to do, that's got nothing to do with the RNA. That's all to do with the LGU. No. Uh, and, uh, no, and, no, and all they had to do was approach the course and ask, can, can we get the old course? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions. <laughs> and the, the event had to go to Yeah. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions that the RNA... The RNA, 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 RNA you know, it, it's the LGU at the end of the day that need to do a better job um, to promote women's golf in the country and across the United Kingdom and Ireland um, and get get the Open Championship, which is, it's a British Open, but it's, it's really the Women's Open Championship. It should be more closely integrated with, with the Open, in my opinion, as I said a couple of weeks ago. Um, no problem. And I think that it, it's a huge event and it should be given that status. So in 2015, when it comes back here, the Open, why why not play it here again? And then 2016 or, or 2018, when apparently it's going to Royal Port Rush, play the women's at Royal Port Rush, or even better, play it on the other course at Royal Port Rush at the same time. Um, do something innovative and and make make it exciting for fans um, and and really make make the women golfers feel part of the golfing community at the highest level, not just a sideshow, which which it isn't this week. This week's an amazing event, but I think um, the, the Women's British Open, obviously it lags behind the, the Women's US Open, which is an enormous event, um, and, and probably the LPGA as well, and the Craft Nabisco. Um, so, so it's probably the fourth, maybe even the fifth, uh, major and status in women's golf, just um, maybe because of the travelling involved, the fact that there aren't really any other big events um, on the Ladies European Tour. Um, maybe well, that, that, that's, not, that's, that's, not, that's not actually true, Mark, because the, the, the Evian is there and the girls love going to Paris. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you are right, that, that's been elevated to a major, but I mean, in the UK, how often do do the top do the top female golfers come across? Um, well, they don't. They don't exactly. And and last week the scheduling, you had the ladies European Masters at the Buckinghamshire, and that finishes the day before final qualifying at Kings Barnes. The likes of Shane Woods have to travel up after trying to get into the Open and competing over four, three days at the Buckinghamshire, and then travelling the length of the country to play, uh, it was an early tea time, I think it was before 10 o'clock on, on Monday, what, what, you got to qualify. You got, to open, you, know? you got to open it up, up, open up a bit, Matt, and ask Elizabeth if uh, 
she believes that the field has been that, that has come over from the state from the LPGA from from what we see here I'm, I'm walking down the course and being on the practice range today Elizabeth and, and seeing a uh, Yanni Sang and uh, 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 Jenny Shin played with her yesterday in the, in the practice round with uh, 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 Lexi Thompson was there as well it was all good golfers out there playing and do you feel that, that the American of the, of the LPG have sent a good strong field across? Yes, yeah, I, th I, th I do agree with that but I think that um, the Women's British Open if you look at the coverage on the BBC this week the coverage is nowhere near as extensive um, and that's not equality um, I think we should be seeing more of it. It's only I think it's five hours on on the first day, which which isn't uh, anywhere near what it was for the Open Championship, and you're going to miss most most of the top players will be out in the morning, and you're going to miss miss most of their rounds. The coverage only starts at one o'clock in the afternoon, um, so I think from that point of view, it's not it's not equal, um, and it's not helping uh, with the exposure of women's golf. Um, what 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 would you say, Elizabeth? Um, in America, is, is is the exposure anywhere near as, as good as it is for the men, or, or is it getting getting? No, of course it isn't as good. I mean, this is an economic issue. This is not a this is not a, a gender issue or a discrimination issue. This is an economic issue. I mean, look at the difference in the prices. Look at the difference in the level of financial sponsorship. If you can't bring the money in. Then you're not going to get the coverage. That's that's a simple, basic economic fact. You know, yeah. Mike Lee yeah. has done a tremendous yeah. job in turning the LPGA around and generating much more um, depth to the financial sponsorship of the of the LPGA tour. And given what's been going on in the global economy for the last five years, I think it's amazing that anything's even survived that yeah. falls yeah. into the category of, of luxury. And certainly golf falls yeah. into that category. Now, I, I, think yeah. I really think that you're not taking into account of, you know, the global finances when you talk about discrimination. Women's golf started behind, although in fact women have been very engaged in golf at the competitive level for over a hundred years. It's, it's just simply been something that's been more or less somewhat invisible. Not entirely invisible, but somewhat invisible. I, I think as the as the, the LET and the LPGA pull up their bootstraps and generate the financial sponsorship, the kinds of issues that you're raising about media coverage and so forth are going to resolve themselves automatically. We need to go out and find money. Yeah, 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 yeah. I absolutely agree. Well, that, well, you, that you, 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 you alluded to the Zeddy's goal for 100, 100 years. years. Uh, and, uh, we can we can confirm there's a fantastic exhibition just below my seat right now in the British Golf Museum, uh, uh, highlighting 100 years of ladies golf. Yes. And com and competitive golf at that. It's a wonderful exhibition. And all those girls that are playing this week should and the BBC should be highlighting that. Should and are two different things, aren't they? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think maybe there's maybe a historical thing, which they which don't they um, know. Waves are Arias, Nancy Lopez. Lopez. They don't. They don't talk about the female golf in the past and and show that the depth of the history of women's golf does well. Well, it goes back before Babes and Arias. Long way. Women, yeah, long way. Women golfers waiting for Dave Savarias. I've gone back to the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> um, I figured out a way to. No, I figured out a way to control this noise, but what happens is I cut off my audio when I do it. So I can't talk to you when I'm making the spaceship stop. <laughs> 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 
Uh, we've had a great time later on the since we started this. Um, so, so nothing surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's a great time to be here. Yeah, it's a great time. Yeah, it's a great It is pretty amazing. Anyway, I think what we'll do is bring the bring to a close for this evening. Um, and hopefully, I guess we'll join us again sometime during, sometime during the week. During the week. Um, um, as we'll be getting we'll closer to the moment, previewing it, and then each, each afternoon or evening, um, we'll be looking at the um, 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 so Hopefully, we'll have other people to join us during the week. And um, hopefully, at some stage, John will be back. I don't know how the schedule is going to But we'll, we'll look at we'll it. And then chatting right, again. I'd love to come back. You just let me know when. And I'll work on my speaker issue, on my microphone issue. We know. Right. Okay, then. Okay, right. From the three of us, this is the first of the night. Um, uh, we'll say goodbye. It's getting pretty breezy where I'm stood, and it's starting to rain. So, so, I'll see you again. Bye. I love the old course. I love the old course. Next time I'll be able to join you physically. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. And that's the way. And, uh,